So now that we have logged in, we know how to log in, let's check out what our profiles look like. The first thing that you're going to want to do in order to go to your profile is you're going to look up here in the top uh, right hand corner. You're going to see your name. Uh, next to it, you're going to see a little drop down arrow. I'm going to click on that drop down arrow and I'm going to look at my profile. I'm going to click on my profile and this is going to take you to your public profile page. Now, all these profile pages are roughly structured exactly the same way. Um, what you're going to see is any of your public projects or public components. These are tools on the OSF, and we're going to talk about them a little bit in a bit. Um, but only things that are public will be shown on this page. Uh, you will also see your public profile link. So if you want to share this public profile link with another group or another person, all you need to do is send them this particular link, and this it directly relates only to you. An important aspect of these profile pages are the social entertainment education features where you're filling out information about yourself. Uh, as you can see, I logged in through ORCID. Uh, so my ORCID ID is actually connected right here. Uh, but say I logged in through my email address. Um, once you log in through ORCID once, it's going to show up on here. Um, but other than that, you can actually edit your profile information to put in any sort of information. All you would do to do that is look up in this top left hand corner. You're going to see edit your profile. Click on this link. Not sure why it keeps doing that. Uh, and it's going to take me to my settings page. Now, important thing to realize is this side column here where you have all these different tabs. But the first thing I'm going to look at is my profile information. This is where I can change my name. Uh, so say I get married and I have to rename myself. Um, I can change that information here and that directly relates to uh, all my citations. So make sure that you are looking at the different citation styles and how that looks and how that comes out um, because that's very important, especially as people are citing your work on the OSF. Looking at account settings, which is that second tab down on the side, uh, I can add a additional email addresses. So as you'll see, I have an email address for my primary email, which is the OSF, which is the one that I log in through. Uh, however, I do have alternate email addresses. This is my Virginia Tech email address. I do have the option over here of making that my primary email address. Now, why am I telling you this? Uh, people change jobs. People get new email addresses all the time. Uh, and what you can do is before you lose access to those email addresses, all you need to do is add your email address and change it to whatever your primary. So if you say move uh, to a different university or institution, this gives you an excellent opportunity to maintain all of your work and still have login access to your work. Um, if something happens and you're not able to connect your email address, that's fine. Uh, all you need to do is email support and we'll walk you through the process of how to uh, connect and merge any accounts that you create. Uh, default storage location is something we'll talk about when we talk about projects. I'm going to talk about here. Uh, any connected identities, uh, or can verified affiliated institutions, again, OSF institutions, not general institutions, uh, opting into sharing, uh, which is our preprint sharing service. Uh, if I wanted to change my password, I can do this here. I can also do that on the main login page as well. Uh, but this is a great way if you wanted to just change it here. Uh, again, one thing I was pointing out is the security settings. If you want to disable or you want to enable two-factor, this is how you're going to do it. The last thing I want to talk about is deactivating accounts. Uh, that's down at the bottom of this page. Uh, so if you request a deactivation, what's going to happen is that's going to be a different request depending on who you are, how many things you have on the OSF. Um, and realistically, what that's going to do is it's going to send the request to our support team. Our support team is going to look at your profile, look at all your information, and tell you exactly what's going to happen when you deactivate your account. Sometimes that looks different depending on what uh, tools and things you have created on the OSF. Uh, they're going to ask you to confirm whether that's what you want to do or not. And then from there, we can actually deactivate your account.